This week on Sport Fishing, we're back aboard the Sea Star. We just left from Oceanside, California about an hour ago, and now we're here at the first stop. We headed down towards San Diego. We're right outside the kelp beds, fishing some hard structure on the bottom, looking for sand bass, calico bass, and you never know, maybe we'll get something exotic too. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez, and I live to fish. All right. <laughs> I have been fishing along the Pacific Coast my entire life. Oh! Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. So there's a nice sandy, one of the first ones we caught on the plastic. We're over a rocky reef area right now, and uh, even though you don't see any kelp on the surface, there's good structure down near the bottom. And even as these drop, uh, as they're falling, they'll get bit, or as you, re as you retrieve them. And uh, this is the product here. So that, that's a Probably just a 14 inch bass. That, that may be just legal. We're gonna measure them up. Might be even a little bit bigger yeah, one. Just a little nicer. Well, that's a nice one. We're gonna get it. Oh, you got to pull them up there. Nice and good. Yeah, look at that. Two in a row. This is the hot jig today so far. Isn't that something? You're on them. We're on them. Bigger than the last one. Yeah, this is bigger than the last one. This is a really nice grumpy here. Kind of mid spring fish. We're out here in June of 17. And uh, that's a real prime example. Very uh, robust fish here, and I can feel he's been eating. He feels like he's been eating red crabs. I can feel crabs in, inside of him. That's a really nice bass. Good job. All right, we're off to a good start. Two in a row. Here we go. We got a calico here. Might even be legal, Joe. Yeah, that's a close one. So that's on the uh, on a Just, drop loop. Yeah, a dropper loop with a live anchovy. Live anchovy. A big belly on him. He's been eating something. Yeah, for a while. For a while. Nice colors on that fish. We're getting a little bit more light now, so it's more likely these calicos start biting. And we're, this spot's a little bit different because we're over the kelp bed. You don't see a whole lot of kelp on the surface, but it's just down like five to ten feet below the surface. But that's where these calicos love to hang out, right in the kelp beds. So we're gonna measure this guy up. Yeah, we're gonna probably end up releasing this fish, but we're gonna take a little break from the action here for the Sea Star with Captain Joe and go to the tackle box. Give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's trip. This week in the tackle box, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what we're doing today. We're fishing aboard the Sea Star, fishing along the coast down San Diego County, and along here in the kelp beds, there's lots of calico bass, sand bass, and little rockfish mixed in. And because of that, we like to throw a variety of baits, either live bait with a small live bait hook, or like to throw bucktails. And there's two styles of bucktails. This is the normal bucktail with the smaller hook, and this is the brand new HD bucktail with a large ADOT hook. Works out really good for the yellowtail and the white sea bass, and the big legal bass, they love these too. And with these, what you would do is put a whole squid, maybe two squid on it, on this smaller one, just a strip of squid. 
And the outfit you want to use is something like this, medium action. I like to use a reel like this with a power handle. I like the level wind, so it makes it nice and easy to work the lure back and work that bucktail. And you can see I have Spectra on here. So I have 50 pound Spectra line. You can go down to 40 if you want. And then on top of that, anywhere from 20 to 30 pound monofilament. If you're gonna fly line with live bait right on the surface of the kelp, then go ahead and put a piece of fluorocarbon on there. But for just working the straight bucktail toward the bottom, you don't need the fluorocarbon, just straight mono works out fine. And just the convenience of a small reel with the power handle works out really good. Nice action rod, California rod, works out really nice for this type of fishing. And this is the basic gear you need. Just want to work that butt tail right along the stringers of the kelp, cast it out there and just let it fall all the way down to the bottom. And with that squid on there, all that squid's going to do is when the fish bites it, they're going to hold on to it a second or two longer, giving you a chance to set the hook in the fish. All right, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> Let's see what we got down here. Bottom fish. There's a nice bass. On the sea. On the sea star. Nice bass. At the bottom. All right. Wow. That was just not a straight squid. Is that on that fresh squid or this squid? Rips of squid. Got a little bit bigger hook on here. Not too much bigger, but a little bit. That's a nice crumpy bass. Springtime, healthy Captain fish. On this, the Dan Hernandez trip. This one uh, is right on the bottom, about a yeah. two ounce slider. And then this hook uh, about two feet below that. Fish picked it up. See the rod bend, boom, got him. Nice one. All right, what number is that? Oh, pulling hard. Big bass there, that's a nice one. Real nice. Zinc took off, was swimming, hooked him back by the stern, swam up here midship. Pretty good. Is that on live bait or is that on? It's on that hook. Look up there, Sandy. See, there's another, another there's Sandy. There's... Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Oh, 
the these rockfish, they get mixed in with the, uh, right in there with the bass. You want to keep it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Another white sea bass here. Another white sea bass coming over. Oh, on the B-52. Oh, look at the strip of squid. Two of them. And that's a beauty. Oh, that's the second one. <laughs> These fish are really kind of delicate when they're this size here. But they need to be 28 inches to keep. And uh, this is a really nice, really nice fish right here. But we are, we are going to release them. Yep. See how he got hooked in the corner of the mouth with that smaller B-52. Works really good. These are beautiful fish. They can get up to be 100 pounds. 100 pounds. But they really fight well. Okay, so we're going to unhook this guy. He's in good shape. He's going to go right back in. They're related to uh, croakers. They're in a the croaker family. I can even hear him right now. He's, he's croaking. Okay, here you go. There we go. Live bait every time. Here comes my calico. Bring in some kelp with it. Let's see, we're fishing, fishing right in the kelp stringers. That time I brought some of the kelp stringer up with another short calico bass. But it's just fun that they're biting that surface bait. A fly line bait right there, live anchovies. All right, we're gonna release this fish right now, but we're gonna take a break in the action and go to the galley and show you how to cook up on this delicious fish we're catching today. This week in the galley, we're in Cerritos, California at Pier 76 Fish Grill. Hey, Chris. Dan, pleasure to have you. Chris is the owner and he's inviting us down. He's a big fisherman too. And uh, what do you have in store for us today? Today we're gonna do a fish taco, but not just any fish taco, a smoked fish taco. That's what's nice about his restaurant. They make a variety of dishes. They have some staples that you're used to seeing, but like this fish taco dish, does it his own way. Yes. So how do we get started with this? So this is gonna be a really simple preparation. However, the depth of the dish really comes from smoking the fish, and that's what takes the most time, Dan. Right. So when we do catch our fish, you know, if you're, if you're out catching your rockfish or a, a meaty fish really works well, yellowtail can work wonderful, mahi-mahi obviously does wonderful, swordfish is great in this dish as well. Any fish that you like to smoke, um, and, and that's, that's what we're going to use as the base. So use your traditional smoking recipe. We brine our fish overnight, or about four hours really, in a molasses brine. So uh, uh, three parts salt, one part sugar, and so once that really denatures those proteins is an essential part of smoking, um, then we smoke it in hickory. All right, so the fish has already been smoked. Fish is smoked. You now, have a little bit of seasoning on it? Yes, we do, with just a little bit of herbs, and I lightly toss it in a lemon aioli. Okay. And so now from here, what that lemon aioli is going to help to do, we're going to toss it underneath the salamander. At home, you can do this under your broiler. So you put it on the broiler setting where the temperature is, the heat is coming from the top. top. You know, I think some ovens, old ovens, you put it down on the bottom of the oven, right? Where it kind of, and that's going to be the most important part. And we'll see after about four minutes that it's really going to create a nice golden brownness. And what that is doing is going to caramelize. It's developing another level of flavor, so umami. And, and that's really the secret of this dish, besides the smoking. Cool. So we'll go ahead and place this up here. And, that, and from there now, I use a corn tortilla. I'm just going to place these right on the grill right now. Okay. So for this dish, we already have our prepared tomatoes, mm -hmm. our prepared green onions, avocado. I throw the lemon on the grill as well. It imparts just another level of flavor. What we do here at the restaurant, we make a tangerine salsa. It's a tangerine jalapeno salsa. So we'll take the jalapenos, 
roast them on the grill, peel them, seed them, mix them with a little bit of some ball, like a chili garlic paste, some rice wine vinegar, that brings up the acid as well, and a touch of olive oil. And, and so tangerines. This, and tangerines, right, exactly. All right, so now we're gonna check our fish. Voila. Oh, yeah, caramelized yeah. on top. Caramelized on top, and that's really what the aioli helps impart to, and it's also gonna impart some flavor as well. Our roasted tomato cream, we roast the tomatoes, mix it with a little sour cream. This is the base. And now we're gonna fill the taco with this wonderful smoked fish. And like you said, that's the whole key to this dish is that the fish has already been smoked. It's already been smoked, right, exactly. And you can use really any fish. So by the time you put in the salamander, all you're doing is heating it up kind of. That's it. All right, our next step on the process is going to be just adding a little bit of cabbage. Wouldn't be a fish taco without some Would cabbage. Would not be a fish taco without it. <laughs> you got it, exactly. This is what I'm dying to taste. Yes. We have our tangerine, tangerine salsa. Tomatoes. Our green onions. And the grilled onion. I mean the grilled lemon. We can always add avocado as well for that other flavor component. That looks really good. Voila. <laughs> okay, Chris, I gotta try this. Yeah, you got it. Mmm. How does that work out? That is delicious. I've had lots of fish tacos in my life. That's huh. a totally different taste. Yes. And I like how you just take it up a notch. I mean, it's a healthier fish taco than I'm used to. Right. Because there's no deep frying involved in here. It's just a great, great dish. But not really lacking on the flavor because of those techniques. The smoking technique, the roasting technique, adding the acid brings up the flavor. And that tangerine and the tangerine sauce is just delicious. Yes. That's really good. Thank you very much, man. Well, Dan, pleasure to have you. Thank you. And uh, Pier 76 Fish Grill is located in Cerritos, right across the street from the mall. And your website address? Pier76fishgrill.com. All right, man. Thanks again. Likewise. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Even the Sandies are coming up and fly lining. Oh, yeah. that's short too. Ooh, it looks like a nicer calico. There he is. Again, fly line bait. I don't know if this one's legal, but he's pretty close to legal. Come here, Danny, come in. This is Danny, our deck hand. Hey, guys. Here, I'll let you get him out of your decks. So I'm just fishing with uh, fly line bait and live anchovy right up on the surface. The skipper has us down here in San Diego County, and we're fishing right, really close to the kelp right now. We started off earlier in the day in a rocky bottom with no kelp, and now we're right along the kelp. There's my little legal calico bass. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action, and when we return, we'll be back here aboard the Sea Star. So I just pin on an anchovy, have a size four must-add live bait hook, and uh, have a perfection loop knot here. Just gonna toss it right back here in the kelp. We got a lot of calicos here. Just show you how easy this is. Just get the bait in the water. Jason just got bit. My bait just hit the water about a second ago, and I'm already getting a nibble. There it goes, the line's coming off my reel. See the line coming off the reel, line coming off the reel? All I'm going to do now is, that's it. There we go. 
just swam down on them and the fish was there. When you get on a bite like this, when the fish come up to the surface, it's just so much fun. And all year it's been, the water been cold, we have to fish the bottom. But uh, when you start getting them on the surface like this, when every bait is a fish, it's pretty awesome. That's all there is to it. See where that fish is hooked right here in the corner of the jaw, nice and easy. Not even hurt, size four muscat hook and that perfection loop knot so the bait can move all over the place. Nice little fish. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. For this week's tip of the week, I wanna tell you how we cut all the fish today. We're using Flyline Live Anchovies for bait. And it's the first time in years I've seen anchovies that big and they're a good, perfect size for fly lining with no weight or nothing, just a straight hook. And the calicos were aggressive. They were chasing all the baits. They weren't very selective, but the anchovies, you know, decent sized anchovies, you had to use a small hook. That's this week's tip. Fishing anchovies, go small hook. And another tip is tie a knot like this. It has a loop in it. This is a perfection loop knot. That way your bait can swim around any direction it wants and you're gonna get a lot more bites. If you don't know how to tie that knot, buy a hook that comes with a ring on it. Mustad makes a lot of hooks with rings on them and some like this, this is a small 94151, really good strong hook. So if you hook a white sea bass or a calico bass, that hook will be strong enough. Well, that's this week's tip of the week. I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.